start off here with a question. What do you get when you mix MLM millionaire scammers with family vloggers? I have a very specific answer for you. Della Vlogs, a YouTube channel with over three and a half million subscribers featuring a filthy rich MLM CEO and her gold digging husband. They grew their audience by flaunting their lavish lifestyle that they fund by scamming literal children and their families, taking them alongside their journey with infertility, then being scammed themselves in a fake adoption debacle, and eventually ending up as a family vlog channel after they adopted a daughter and are now using her as a clout accessory if we're being honest. The monsters behind the Della Vlogs YouTube channel have built themselves an empire on scamming and exploitation, and they continue to reap the rewards to this day. We have a lot to unpack with them, but first, let's talk about some num nums with the sponsor of today's video, Factor. Factor is a meal subscription service that makes meeting your nutrition goals easier than ever by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your door. And these meals are ready to eat, like you just pop them into the microwave for two minutes and voila! So convenient, which is why I like it so much because I'm a working stay-at-home mom. I'm running around chasing a three-year-old all over the place all day every day that sometimes I just like forget to eat. I find myself skipping meals because the idea of going into the kitchen to whip something up is just like too much. I like that factor takes the stress out of meal time for me. It keeps me going. It's so easy and so quick that no matter how how many toddler messes I have to clean up in a day, I at the very least can have a nice, nutritious meal. Super easy, super fast. And Factor has something for everybody. Whether your goals are to eat keto, vegan, vegetarian, calorie smart, or if you're like me, maybe you need a little more protein in your diet. I'm about to start physical therapy because children destroyed my midsection. My core is messed up. So I need more protein in my diet. So I went with their Protein Plus meal plan. They sent me meals like freaking queso fun dito with brown beef, yum. Or so far what's been my favorite is the garlic mushroom chicken thighs because it's bursting with delicious juicy flavor. They also sent me these cafe latte protein shakes that are super yummy, perfect for a morning pick me up since these specific ones have caffeine. It's like having your morning coffee with a protein shake and it tastes super yummy. But if you're not into protein shakes, they have a lot of other snack options, like they have breakfast, smoothies, juices, small bites, and more. And with how flexible Factor is, it fits anyone's busy schedule. If you need to skip a week or adjust your order size, you can do it super easily. So if you're ready to get started with Factor, head to factor75.com or click the link below and use the code SavannahMarie50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and 20% off of your next month's orders. That's code SavannahMarie50 at factor75.com to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off of your next month of orders. So thank you, Factor, for sponsoring today's video. Now let's go talk about some more serious stuff. Dallin and Bella Lambert are the faces of the YouTube channel Della Vlogs, and I hadn't even heard about them until I put out my last deep dive into Mr. Beast, where I mentioned that they had won $500,000 from Mr. Beast himself by competing in his Willy Wonka-esque contest. To my surprise, a lot of you had things to say about this couple, mainly that Bella was the founder of Origami Owl. If you've been around this YouTube channel for a while, you'll recognize that name because it's an MLM or a multi-level marketing company. And a pretty nasty one at that because the company was regularly recruiting children. I. 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 I am an owl. Yeah, a pyramid scheme targeting children. You can't make this stuff up. So that's where we're gonna begin our story. When Bella was 14, she founded the company Origami Owl alongside her parents. She started out by buying vintage lockets and filling them with charms from other bits and bobs that she had laying around, creating custom and unique lockets. I actually had an old school Origami Owl necklace that my mom got me for like Christmas or my birthday or something one year. It must have been in the pretty early days of the business, which is pretty wild to think about now, just how these things come full circle <laughs> in the strangest way. Origami Owl was actually founded in Arizona and like I've lived here my whole life. They're local to me, which is 
pretty wild also. So like it adds up that I would have a piece of origami owl jewelry. I don't think I have it anymore though, unfortunately. <laughs> anyway, Bella was able to secure a small loan from a family friend who invested, oh, you know, just his entire life savings into her business idea. No biggie, no big deal, totally normal and not privileged at all. She used this money to rent a kiosk in the Chandler Mall and operated out of that for a year and a half before she decided to go for the MLM business model. And in another turn of events, in the life of a privileged child, her entire family allegedly moved from Connecticut to Arizona to help launch the brand. Again, totally normal things that every average family can totally do at the drop of a hat. For the record, the Weems family appears to be members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, or LDS, or more commonly known as Mormons, which is a branch off of Christianity, but they have more extreme views than other branches of Christianity. MLMs go hand in hand with the Mormon religion, mostly due to the fact that the church encourages women to bear many children and serve as the family's homemaker instead of entering the workforce, making these work from home schemes very popular within Mormon circles. This may also be due in part to the missionary work that Mormons typically find themselves doing. They're already accustomed to going door to door to try to sell their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to anyone who will answer the door to them. Selling MLM products just comes naturally. So as frustrating as it is to see a teenage girl choosing to launch her small business into the world of MLM, it lines up and it does make a lot of sense. Now, I'll give Bella this. She is the actual definition of an entrepreneur. She had a unique idea, she marketed it, she was successful. She deserves credit for being an actual business founder and owner. Unlike the people that she convinces to join her company in the name of running your own business and being your own boss. If you're unaware of why multi-level marketing is such a harmful business model, definitely take a look around my channel, like this YouTube channel that you're on right now. I have covered MLMs thoroughly, like there are hours and hours and hours and hours of content for you to watch. But as a very brief introduction to the business model, they're essentially pyramid schemes in the way that the only true way to make substantial money in most multi-level marketing companies is not by actually selling the products yourself, but by recruiting people to sell the products underneath you while you make commissions based off of what your downline of recruits sells. The more people you have in your downline, the more money you make. It's extremely rare that anyone becomes financially free in these companies without building a team, despite these companies marketing the opportunity as become financially free by just selling a product that you love. That's really not the truth of it at all. As a matter of fact, a super majority of people who join MLMs, we're talking between 97 and 99% of people, will not make any money and most actually will lose money during their involvement in an MLM. In other words, and in my opinion, they're all scams. The top 1% of people in multi-level marketing companies make all of the money off of the work that the 99% is doing and the inventory that they buy and the personal purchases that they make in the name of being a product of the product. In MLMs, the distributors are the customers and in an MLM like Origami Owl, you better have your own collection of jewelry from the brand that you can wear everywhere you go and in every picture you take and in every TikTok you make. So people will stop you and say, oh my God, your necklace is so cool. Where did you get it? And then they hand over their business card. The bottom 99% is not guaranteed compensation, no matter how much money they invest. And then they usually end up leaving these companies with more debt than they started out with. Anyway, for the record, Origami Owl is now actually one part of a parent company now called Think Goodness, still owned by Bella and her family. Origami Owl is just one of three brands sold by Think Goodness brand partners. Like they also sell skincare and makeup now too. What makes Think Goodness significantly more predatory than other MLMs is their young entrepreneur program. When the company was just called Origami Owl, this program was around, it was called the Owlette program. They're basically the same program, just with a different name now. And what this program offers is the chance for children between the ages of 12 to 17 to join what is, in my opinion, a pyramid scheme. Their current website is very vague about their compensation plans. I can't actually find a current copy of it because it's not posted anywhere on their website. This is sketchy to me because why would I drop 
$200 to sign up for Think Goodness before I even get a chance to look at the compensation plan. What are they trying to hide? Every video I can find about the compensation plan on YouTube was made two to three years ago, so they all seem to be outdated. MLMs usually update their compensation plans often, so it's strange that this is the only public copy on the open web that I can find. But from what I've gathered just by looking at their website and by digging up old blog posts about the Owlette program, an adult will sign up as a brand partner with Think Goodness. Then that adult signs up their child in the Young Entrepreneur Program. According to the website, this gives the child a chance to earn real income, although it doesn't say exactly how much. Are they compensated differently from the adults who sell for the company? I mean, the thing is, with Think Goodness, the party business model appears to be a staple for distributors. While this isn't a necessity and you can totally sell online without buying inventory, it makes sense that a 12-year-old might want to host a party, a fun sleepover if you will, invite all their friends over, and then sell these customizable lockets to them. This would require holding an inventory, so kids are incentivized to invest money into the business with no guarantee that they'll actually sell any of it. Putting children into debt before they even enter the workforce and have real assets of their own. In my opinion, it sets them up for failure. Unless their mommies and daddies are financially stable enough to just take on that debt themselves. And let's talk about mommies and daddies for a second. Specifically, Bella's mother, Christian Chrissy Weems. Someone who's raising five children under the influence of the LDS church would be someone presumed to be a good person with the moral compass of a saint, right? Well, not surprisingly, based off of the morally corrupt reality that lies within too many religious organizations, Bella's mother is a garbage human being, and I don't say that lightly. I know that seems harsh to say, but there are two very good reasons why I say this. The first incident will only be mentioned briefly here because it hurts my heart to the extent that I feel physical pain in my chest when hearing about these stories, so trigger warning for child abuse and neglect, but in 2004, Chrissy left her three-month-old baby in a hot van for two hours, where the internal temperature of the van reached 144 degrees. Welcome to Arizona. This kind of shit kills people and animals here all the time. The baby miraculously survived and Chrissy wasn't charged, but in my opinion, she should have been. I don't know how any functional human being can just forget that the newborn that you spend all day with every single day, like just forget that they're strapped in the back seat of your car, probably screaming and crying and then passing out from heat exhaustion. It, like, it's just so sad. And I always try to extend sympathy to mothers because like, I know how hard it can be, especially in the first few months. I know mom brain is a thing. It can really be hard to deal with. But when it comes to living in Arizona, like this is parenting 101. Businesses out here have signs on their front doors reminding you to check your back seats and being like, hey, don't leave your dogs or your babies in the car. I mean, it is constantly shoved down our throats out here for good reason. A person who leaves a three month old infant strapped into their car for two hours in the middle of June in Arizona, as far as I'm concerned, that's an unfit parent. They don't deserve to have kids. That's just my opinion. Someone in the comments is gonna come at me and be like, you're being too harsh, you're being too judgmental. Nah, 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 fuck that. Your number one job as a parent is to protect your children. If you are responsible for putting your children in harm's way, you should be punished, period. Like, even if it's an accident, dude, like at least call it reckless endangerment or something. But anyway, the article of the incident will be linked down in the description below. If you're sensitive to hearing details about this stuff, don't click on it, dude. Like it shattered my heart into a bazillion pieces. And as a parent, it was extremely hard to read. It somehow gets worse though. What if I told you that Chrissy helped her friend cover up an affair that the friend was having with a high school student. Yeah, Chrissy Weems helped a PDF file cover up child molestation. Yeah, inside of a strict religious organization? Who ever heard of such a thing? Sarcasm aside, this is Susan Brock. At the time of the incident, she was married to a Maricopa County supervisor, so the family was seemingly well respected in the community. Until October 2010, when Susan was caught with a 17-year-old boy, resulting in her 28-year-long marriage ending. Turns out she'd been molesting this boy for three years. Oh, and her 21-year-old daughter was also allegedly having sexual liaisons with the same underage boy. It was a family affair of the worst possible kind. But what does this have to do with the Weems family? Well, Chrissy Weems was arrested in December of 2010 and was accused of destroying and altering evidence of Susan Brock's molest 
molestation of the child. It seems as though Susan Brock was communicating with the boy through his Yahoo email account. He shared the password with Susan, and then they would write notes to each other in the drafts of the account, so there was no sent correspondence between the two. For whatever reason, Chrissy decided to take it upon herself to log into the Yahoo account and allegedly alter, damage, or destroy incriminating evidence. This was discovered because in a recorded call made from the prison between Chrissy and Susan, Chrissy straight up implicates herself by asking for the password to the email account so she could take care of some things. Do you remember when we went to California? You and I and all the girls, we went to the beach house and you had to have a password to get into the gate. Do you remember what that is? Beach house. In a phone conversation between Weems and Brock just released, Weems talks in code attempting to get the password for the email account. When Brock doesn't understand, Weems just comes out and asks for it. Thank you. I, I needed that in order to take care of some things and to be able to get into it, so thank you. Even to this day on the Think Goodness website, it lists Chrissy as the brains behind the brand's makeup line, although it doesn't actually show a picture of her. Only Bella and this Annette lady. Gee, I wonder why they're being so secretive. But yeah, as if the Think Goodness brand and wasn't tainted enough by recruiting children and scamming its distributors, the cherry on top is that Chrissy Weems, a co-founder and current affiliate, was charged for trying to cover up the crimes of a PDF file. If Bella was smart, she would distance herself and her brand from her mother. It's hard to have a brand supposedly built around doing good and helping people with a sitting defender being that close to the head of operations. And I just want to point out that Bella founded Origami Owl in 2010, the same year that this all went down. Between trying to start up her own small business as a teenager and dealing with her mother's disgusting crimes, Bella would eventually meet and fall in love with Dallin. They say Bella was throwing a pazuki party at her house and the friends she invited would also bring some friends and one of those friends was Dallin. I had a pazuki party at my house. I invited some friends over randomly a bunch of people showed up at my house and Dallin was one of them. He showed up with some of his friends. I met Dallin and he followed me on Instagram and we just became friends. And we were best friends for about a year. They hit it off, started dating in mid-2016, got engaged in December of 2016, and were married on March 4th, 2017, less than four months after getting engaged. I know, that's a very fast-paced, whirlwind love story. But what else do you expect from Mormons? Like, this is pretty typical. They were married at this huge LDS temple in Gilbert, Arizona, further confirmation of the couple's ties to Mormonism. Before Bella and Dallin got together, Bella had a YouTube channel where she would mostly vlog about traveling and other origami owl experiences with an occasional cover song thrown in there. Once Bella and Dallin got together, the channel was officially rebranded as Della Vlogs. It basically became a couple's vlog channel and then one of those stupid prank channels that plagued YouTube in the late 20 teens. And this is where the views started picking up on the Della Vlogs channel. With titles like Filling My Wife's Car With Popcorn Prank and Missing Wife Prank on Parents Calls Police and Smashing My Husband's Xbox Revenge Prank. Hey guys, editing Savannah from the future here. I just need to show you this and I don't know if it's some kind of coincidence or what the heck is going on, but I'm sitting here editing and I'm looking for a prank video that I mentioned in my script, actually multiple prank videos, and for the life of me, I cannot find them. They're gone. So I go to Della Vlog's Social Blade on Thursday, this Thursday, September 12th, they deleted 79 million views worth of videos. I don't know how many videos that was. Check this out. They lost 79 million views. Now, the reason I'm like, whoa, is this a coincidence? It's because I posted an Instagram story where I'm <laughs> showing off that I got my Neopets account back. You can see at the top that there's a Della Vlogs tab open and one of you guys messaged me pointing it out. Now, I don't wanna put you on blast, sis, so I'm not gonna like share your name or anything, but tell me why this was sent at 5.21 a.m. on Thursday and then that same exact day they're deleting videos. I don't I don't know if this person went and sent them a message or maybe one of you guys sent it on your own. I'm not trying to be like, I did this, but like, did they catch wind that I'm doing a deep dive on them? Why is this a thing? Dude, I don't know, but this is wild. They also restricted comments on their Instagram, so I'm just gonna click on a random video and show you. 
Comments on this post have been limited. Clearly, people have been commenting. This is an older post. I didn't want to show you their new stuff because it's all got their kid's face in it, but they're all limited with bazillions of comments. So this is recent. So they're trying to get ahead of something. I don't know if it's this, if they caught wind of it, or if there's something else, but I don't know. What are you guys trying to hide? The channel would eventually hit 1 million subscribers in 2022. If you look at their subscriber count today, Della Vlogs has risen to over over three and a half million, a 2.5 million subscriber leap over the course of two years, which is an impressive amount of growth. Surely a prank channel wouldn't grow that fast in the post COVID era. Well, that's because Bella dropped a very different video from their regular prank garbage in April of 2022, where she opens up about the couple's struggle with infertility. In the last three years, we and Ellen have been Try to have a baby. As a woman who struggled with having my own babies, I understand not only her extreme emotions on the topic, but also the need for content like this. Some people might look at it and say, wow, how can you make monetized content about infertility? Why are you using infertility for views? The truth is approximately 48 million couples struggle with infertility globally. Infertility is so common that it affects about one in five birthing people. Knowing the struggle and heartbreak myself firsthand, I can tell you that this kind of content is very helpful in making you not feel so alone. Watching another person struggle with the same issues as you have and then come out the other side of it can give you hope. Plus, Bella is an absolutely drop-dead gorgeous, charismatic, and successful woman who seemingly has everything she could ever want, except for this one thing. There's a lot of layers to why this content from Della Vlogs was interesting enough for people to follow along. So the bulk of the content to come out of the Della Vlogs channel after this was dedicated to documenting their journey with IUI and eventually IVF. Three failed rounds of IVF, to be specific. And this shouldn't be a secret by now, but IVF is brutal. I've never gone through it myself, thankfully, but I have so much empathy for people who do go through it. It's painful, stressful, expensive, and it's a long, drawn-out process. And they document documented all of it. Bella even wrote a song about her infertility journey that made me tear up because like, been there sis. And as time went on and they experienced failure after failure, their audience grew. And in 2023, the couple said that they'd be taking a break from infertility treatments and shifting their focus to another pathway of parenthood, adoption. And call it coincidence or karmic justice, but through their adoption journey, the people responsible for running an MLM scam that targets children became scammed themselves. In March of 2023, Bella and Dallin started posting content surrounding their path to adoption. While they both initially appeared to be excited, they also went off saying things like this. Adoption kind of feels like the last step, and it's kind yeah. of sometimes a like hard topic, up. and it almost feels like you're giving up like the chances of having your biological kids for adoption. I don't know why I had that mindset and I think it's a poor mindset to have. For a long time it felt like we were giving up on our dream of, you know, getting pregnant and all of that. For me, like when Bella approached me and said like we need to look into adoption, like being completely honest, I was like a little against it. Because I like I'm the type of person I don't like giving up. And yeah. it felt like giving up. And it felt like everything else failed and this was like our last option. And so it kind of hit me like, "Oh my gosh, we failed it." everything this is our last option we felt that bringing in having our own biological kid yeah a lot of times you feel like adoption's giving up yeah they literally said adoption feels like giving up and a last resort some thoughts are better kept inside your head guys I'm sure their adopted kids won't appreciate hearing that in the future. On the other hand, it's also pretty obvious that any baby that makes its way into their family would be well off and well provided for, for its entire life. Like, if you're going to be adopted by anyone, they're probably a good choice as far as setting you up to have a privileged life. So, exciting, yes, but also, they were desperate. And I don't say that in a condescending way, although critics of theirs certainly do. The narrative that Bella and Dallin have been so desperate for any baby that they can get their hands on to use as a prop for their videos has been a popular topic of conversation surrounding Della Vlogs. They've done this in the past with other people's kids, after all. If they had their own baby, it would be endless content for them. All of their friends around them were having babies and turning into family vloggers, and they wanted that for themselves. I personally think that there are bits of truth to that theory, but I also recognize the desire to start a family regardless of your online activities. When I say they were desperate, I mean it in the way that they spent years trying to have their own baby that, understandably, they were desperate to finally fill that missing piece. 
They were so desperate, in fact, that they fell for an adoption scam. I had never considered this to be a thing before researching Della Vlogs, but it makes sense that scams surrounding adoption would exist. Scams of all kinds, run by preying on vulnerable people. Take tech support scams, for example, how they're regularly preying on the elderly. Same with social security scams. Or, you know, MLMs, they prey on vulnerable populations, like disabled people, army wives, religious people, new stay-at-home parents or people who have recently lost income or lost their jobs. Adoption scams also work in this way where they prey on the vulnerabilities of couples who wish to start a family of their own but have not been able to for one reason or another. Again, as I've mentioned, like I have experienced the desperation of wanting to have a baby. I've experienced the loneliness that you feel while you're watching everyone else around you have babies when you have been unsuccessful. I understand the feeling of helplessness that you get when you're just taking hit after hit after hit. Like, I get it. I absolutely understand how a hopeful parent could fall for something like this. It's weird because Bella runs a scam herself, so like, you would think she'd be more privy to how scams work and the potential for scams to happen, but I mean, I'll admit that even though obviously like I'm extremely anti-MLM, like I can say that adoption scams are somehow even more scummy than any MLM I think I've ever really looked into. So how did Bella and Dallin find themselves wrapped up in an adoption scam? Quite honestly, their desperation led them to make some decisions that were fueled by emotions and they weren't fully thought out. First of all, they started getting some backlash right away because they only specifically wanted a newborn baby. You know, not a child, not a toddler. Obviously, children in the system fall out of favorability for a lot of adoptive parents, as unfortunate as it is to say. That's just the reality of the situation. But at the same time, I do recognize that those newborn days go by so fast and, and they're highly sought after and they're really special. So like, I don't blame adoptive parents for maybe wanting to experience those newborn days for themselves. I realize that there's two sides to this criticism and you know, maybe Bella and Dallin will adopt an older kid someday. Actually, they probably won't though. <laughs> I don't see them doing that. Possibly though, who knows? Another major point of contention was that they literally were asking their followers for leads on adoptable babies. I know, it's wild. When they posted a video about their choice to adopt, the end screen literally says, if you know of anyone looking to place a baby for adoption, please reach out. We can't wait to meet our future baby. They also reiterated this plea on a podcast where Bella seems to want to push the limits of what social media can do for people by finding their baby through social media. What could possibly go wrong? The crazy thing is like now that we've announced, I'm so curious, like looking back now, what the response is gonna be. Like, I'm wondering if maybe we even find our birth mother through social media. Oh my gosh. It's you know, crazy. like if there's someone out there who is going to put their baby up for adoption and is looking for a loving home, like, oh my gosh, you seriously could. That could, could. happen. And that That's is what's crazier. At this point, they had over a million subscribers and their videos were getting like hundreds of thousands of views each. What made them think that this was gonna be a good idea? So the next few videos that Della Vlogs put out was about getting certified to adopt and doing Q and A's about the process. They went silent on their YouTube channel for about two months until they finally posted this video titled Twin Gender Reveal Plus Matching with an Expecting Mom Plus Bad News. The description of this video says, Here's an update on the last two months of our lives. We matched with an expecting birth mother pregnant with twins. We told our friends and families and had a gender reveal. It was so perfect until it wasn't. Subscribe for part two. Hmm, that's strange of them to say. So while Bella and Dallin had been off of YouTube, they were busy filming what they thought was going to be a legitimate adoption opportunity. Bella says she received a random message on Instagram. I'm pregnant with twins and I'm looking for someone to adopt them. And that's all she said. And I said, I'm 20 weeks and then she just sent me a half-baked, she's holding a half-baked um, Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> This better not be a prank. The way she says this better not be a prank is some pretty dark foreshadowing. Their communications with this woman continued though, and she shared some messages that she had sent. These messages read, I really don't know what the next steps are, haha. <laughs> I adore you guys, and I think you could raise them to be the best they can be. I would love to continue to build a relationship with you guys before anything is finalized, just to make sure we're a great fit and comfortable with each other. Not sure if you guys are comfortable with an in-person meeting? With mascara streaming
streaming down Bella's face, you could tell that she was hooked. This was made to be believable because the woman was sending them ultrasound pictures and constantly communicating with them. And not only was this woman preying on Bella and Dallin based on their desperation for a baby, but also she was using faith manipulation against them as well. They prepared a nursery, bought a ton of new baby stuff, they have a montage of them telling everyone in their lives that they're adopting twins, they even threw a freaking gender reveal party, complete with an absurd amount of pink foamy bubbles. Right after showing us this exciting moment, however, they ended the video on a cliffhanger where Bella's crying on her couch. The dramatization of splitting this video into two parts isn't really helping to dull the criticism that they get about using their baby as a prop. But shortly after, inevitably, they released part two, titled Our Adoption Was a Scam. The past two months, we believed that we were gonna be adopting identical twin girls. We were so excited, we got everything prepared, we got our nursery ready, we have two car seats, um, and we just come to find out that it was all a big scam. Dallin claims that at the beginning they were skeptical and were even warned about adoption scams. They really seemed to have their blinders on with this one though. At the very beginning, Bella and I were very skeptical. We wanted, we wanted to make sure that everything went very well with the whole, the whole adoption process. We had heard of scams before, like there are people who warned us of scams, and so we were very skeptical of everything that came through. Also, Dallin calls her female, which, ew. But we started talking to this Female. We started talking to this female. Ew! Dallin does claim that the girl started pressuring them to be ready for the babies to be born because, you know, twins come early, which they do. She also convinced them that they needed to have a gender reveal party. And quite frankly, I get the feeling that Bella and Dallin would have had a gender reveal party and would have had their nursery set up immediately, regardless of pressure being put on them. But it's still a nasty thing to do to someone. And somehow it gets even nastier. This woman sent Bella and Dallin texts pretending to be her mother, saying things like, I've always told her to get an abortion, and I cannot stand to look at her, and she is your problem now if you want her stupid babies, and also suggesting that Bella and Dallin need to take her to Disneyland, a strange thing to say about your supposed daughter who you can't even stand to look at because she wouldn't terminate her pregnancy when you told her to, but hey, why don't you take her to Disneyland? That'll make her feel special. What they did end up doing, however, is meeting her for birthing classes. This woman even talked to a social worker at Bella and Dallin's adoption agency for an an hour and somehow there still weren't any red flags being raised in this situation. Perhaps the worst lie this woman made up though was this one. She talked about how her the pregnancy was non-consensual and that she had a lot of trauma and PTSD from that, that whole situation which is real and that is a whole other issue and I can't even believe that she would make that up and, and, and take that story to manipulate someone like that. I think it's the we, most awful thing that someone could do. Our hearts were just broken for her. And I hate to say it, but Dallin is right. This is a real issue that people face. And one of the many reasons why abortion rights need to be protected in this country and around the world, but like specifically in this country right now. When real people go through things like this, there's often just too much trauma that a pregnant person should humanely be expected to handle. It is cruel to force somebody to be pregnant in a situation that they didn't consent to, and even more cruel to force that person to carry the baby to term only to then strip it from its mother and give it away. It's messed up on a lot of levels, so it's absolutely disgusting for this person to have made this part of her fake story. Dallin says he received this email one day that changed everything. It said, I have information on this woman that you really need to know. She sent these saying this was the gender reveal of her babies to several, and I mean several families, thinking that they had a chance to adopt her twins. I'm in a group of hopeful adoptive parents and we all have been talking with her and she's telling everyone that they are the top of her list. Please hear us out. Here's my number. I'm so sorry she's playing you guys. She's talking to like 10 agencies. Please give us a chance to share our stories. We don't want you guys to be swindled. Thank you. When they reached out to the person who sent the email, this person started telling Bella and Dallin that the scammer was sending pictures of the gender reveal party to other adoptive parents, claiming that Bella and Dallin were her friends and they were just throwing her a nice gender reveal party. So the person who emailed them recognized Bella and Dallin from YouTube and that's how they knew to send them a message. They then went and posted pictures of this woman in a Facebook group called Ending Adoption Scams, I guess. And multiple people popped up in that Facebook group
group to be like, yeah, I've had an experience with this person too. And if you haven't guessed by now, the woman wasn't even pregnant. It was all a lie. Dallin says she sent a picture of her at a rodeo where she can be seen wearing a necklace that Bella gifted to her. The image was cropped in a way that you can't see her midsection. Dallin says that they were able to find another picture from the same rodeo where you can clearly see that she had a very flat stomach, which is something you simply cannot hide if you're in your third trimester with twins. But the presence of that necklace in the photo proves that the picture was taken after they had already been in contact with the woman. Her excuse? Oh, I was just sucking in. Girl, you can't do that. Bella says none of the other families who had experiences with this woman sent her any money, except one who gave her a gift card to buy maternity clothes. Other than that, Bella says the motive was unclear. However, if you'll remember when this woman was texting Bella and Dallin pretending to be her own mother, she was telling them that, oh, you should take her to Disneyland. So maybe she thought that she could score a free trip to Disney. Otherwise, it takes a really, really messed up person to do this to one couple, let alone multiple couples, who just desperately want to start a family. The ultrasounds that these families received were purchased on a website where you can literally just buy customized ultrasound pictures, and a pregnancy verification letter that she sent to them was one that you can fill out online and just download. Now, a lot of people online think that Bella and Dallin faked this whole thing for the sake of sad fishing and bringing in a load of cash. Some people say that they knew it was a scam shortly after engaging with the woman, but they decided to let it play out because, again, they'd get a ton of views. That would be a really sinister thing for them to do, and despite Despite how much I don't necessarily respect these people at all, I just don't want to believe, nor do I think that they would go that far just for views. And I know people are gonna disagree with me on that, but like, I don't know, maybe I'm just naive. <laughs> I just don't think they faked it because there's a lot of evidence to suggest that this specific woman has scammed a lot of other people too. I toyed with the idea of whether or not I should discuss this woman's identity because Della Vlog censored her out of their video. Shoddily, of course. They didn't do that great of a job at censoring everything out, which is like further confirmation of this person's identity, but she's also been identified on multiple public forums. And the evidence that Della Vlogs provides in the video lines up with what I found on Online as well. At the very least, I found an adoption scam alert on an agency's website that names her. I'm confident in this being the right person involved in this situation, but if there's even a 1% chance that this is the wrong person, I don't want to dox an innocent person. However, if you just Google who scammed Della Vlogs, her name pops up instantly. And if you look her up on Facebook, this girl has the same black and blue hair as the girl in Della and Dallin's pictures. She also has pictures with horses and she told Bella and Dallin that she was at a rodeo. So yeah, it's very easy information to find. So if you're someone looking to adopt a baby, I would look into it just to make sure you never run into this woman. Anyway, I do really feel for Bella and Dallin in this situation. It's entirely unfair what happened to them, regardless of how Bella makes her money. You can say you reap what you sow and what goes around comes around. In their case, fine. But what about this woman's many other victims? Did they deserve this too? That's doubtful. And based off my research, since there wasn't any money exchanged between this woman and her victims, there's really nothing law enforcement can do since it's not illegal to tell a lie. There's probably ways to go about handling this in civil court, but suing people is expensive. And these other victims who likely don't have a bunch of disposable income because of a scam that they run, like they're probably trying to hold on to their savings for when they actually do adopt a baby. Bella and Dallin are not perfect by any means, but what what happened to them is unbelievably cruel. And it really does hurt my heart to know that people are being put through things like this. Even Bella and Dallin, like it just makes me sad. After the scam happened, Bella got some goats to, in her own words, fill the hole in her heart. We bought goats. We have two baby goats right now and they are, they, it's gonna sound crazy to you, but they really did fill a big hole in my heart. We are officially goat parents. Not really the most responsible choice that she could have made, but I can't say I don't understand why she felt the need to do that. They also gave away all the twin stuff they bought to a family friend in need, which was nice, but of course they had to film it and talk it up like, wow, look at how kind and giving we are. I saw this comment a lot when I covered Mr. Beast, and I have to agree with you guys when you say, if you're gonna do something nice for someone, you don't have to share your good deed with the world. Just do a good thing. 
And of course, they put a Bible verse at the end of the video to hype their good deed up. Turns out, the hole that was left by those babies that never existed wouldn't have stayed empty for very long because they finally legitimately were able to adopt a baby in mid-2023, and their content has revolved around this baby ever since. And there is a lot of valid criticism that you can make against family vloggers and influencers who use their kids for content. At the same time though, I do feel a little bit of joy for them because I do believe that they were were desperate to start a family. And Bella did go through a lot to get to this point. That all being said, there is a snark reddit for Della Vlogs, unsurprisingly. Now, you all know how I feel about snark subreddits. I think they're unnecessarily mean 90% of the time, but every once in a while, you can find actual valid criticism. In this case, most of the subreddit is dedicated to extreme hatred of Bella. I mean, they hate Dallin too, but Bella gets most of the hate on this subreddit. I think there's a lot of misogyny deep rooted in there. By all means, call Bella a scammer, because in my opinion, she is. Say that she uses her kid as a prop and exploits the kid for content, because in my opinion, she does. Call her out for not knowing how to properly hold a baby, like we have evidence of this. But there are a lot of people running around calling her an ugly narcissist who looks like a Cabbage Patch Kid doll. That's literally a very common narrative on this subreddit. People are commenting it all the time. And that's honestly disgusting in my opinion. Like, I don't know who you all are looking at, but I think Bella is absolutely beautiful. And people are pretty terrible towards Bella as she posts pictures of her daughter talking about how cute and smart she is, which like, doesn't every parent do that? Every parent thinks their child is the cutest, smartest thing on the planet. And people are also mad that the first Time she met her daughter, she couldn't stop saying how cute she is, as if that was the only thing that Bella cared about. She's so cute. She's so cute. She's so cute. She's so perfect and so beautiful. So cute. I can't even look at her. She's so. <laughs> Isn't she so cute? Look at her little nose. Isn't she so cute? Isn't she so cute? Look at her face. Look at her little nose. Look how cute she is. She's so cute. Isn't she so cute? I don't think that's true. And I don't think that's worthy of criticism because most babies are objectively cute. Although one of the first things that Bella's mom thought to ask when she found out that they had adopted this baby was, and I shit you not, where did you find her? Where did you find her? And then her dad asked her, where did you get that? Where did you get that? That is the most unhinged response to finding out you're gonna be a grandparent that I've ever heard. And the fact that they both said that to Bella makes me really side-eye this family more than I already was. What is absolutely worthy of all the criticism in the world though, is how much Bella shares, how she shares it, and who she shares it to. And I can't talk too much shit because like, I only recently decided to stop posting pictures of my children on the internet after getting attacked by the scum of the earth commentary bros. <laughs> like they showed up on my Instagram, they started commenting on pictures of my family. And up until that point, I had never really seen a big deal with being like, oh, here's an occasional, like a Christmas picture, like Merry Christmas social media following like not a big deal, but now I get it. And my following is so much smaller than Della Vlogs and I'm even embarrassed at how long it took me to come to this conclusion. It's like, meanwhile, you guys have so many more followers and deal with so many more people on a daily basis than I do. Like, how have you not figured this out? Don't make the same mistake I did, dude. If you are someone with a following and you also have children, it is our duty as parents to protect our children. Even if it's from meaningless strangers comments on the internet, because they're there are people on the internet who will victimize children in more ways than one. They will make personal attacks against innocent children. They don't care. These people are terrible people. <laughs> so the best way to protect our children from the scum of the earth that absolutely exists on the internet is just by not posting their faces publicly. So that's the conclusion I've come to. Not to judge other parents who do it because I get it, but like, I don't know. I just want people to hear me out on this one because this is kind of a new revelation for me and I just feel so ashamed that it took me this long. Bella obviously posts every moment of her baby's life on her YouTube and other social media, but she goes a step beyond that. She'll irresponsibly post videos of her daughter in a bathing suit, creating an open forum for people to post the creepiest comments ever, like this person who says that they can see her tatas. She's a baby, but Bella should know better than to post a video like that. Other critics say they travel with their daughter far too much, which is also probably valid. Today, their daughter 
daughter is over a year old and she's supposedly already been to nine countries like France, Dubai, Jamaica, and so much more. I'm no psychologist, but I will admit that there's probably something to be said for a newborn baby to be stripped from its maternal mother and then be thrown into such a chaotic lifestyle where she's constantly in a new place. That's all she knows so far is just going all over the place and never really having a moment to settle into life. If the kid was older, I'm sure those experiences would be really cool. But right now, it seems silly and possibly even harmful to her development. Again though, I'm not a professional in this area, so I could be wrong. That just seems like something worth considering. There was even an incident a few months ago when the family went to South Korea and they were featured on their local news because they didn't dress their baby appropriately. Multiple Korean women saw their child with no socks on and came running up to gift some to her. According to commenters on their vlog about the trip, it seems like it's a cultural thing for your baby to always wear socks because they're afraid of them catching a cold. I know here, for example, in Arizona, my pediatrician told me that it's important to let the kids be barefoot while you're at home, at least anyway. I guess it has to do with learning to walk and like coordination and stuff. Since I'm from the same city as they are, I can imagine their pediatrician gave them similar advice. However, I always had socks in the diaper bag. Always, no matter what. So it's kind of shocking that they didn't. While the weather was cold and windy enough that literal strangers on the street had to come running up to them and give their baby something to wear. On the topic of stripping a newborn from its maternal mother and the trauma it can cause throughout the child's entire life, apparently that is a thing. I'm far removed from the world of adoption, so I'm just reiterating what I've heard other people discuss online. But my understanding is that there's no way to adopt a child with no trauma involved at all. Since the very act of biological separation of a newborn from its mother is trauma that can manifest into PTSD when the child gets older. That being said, obviously Bella and Dallin will provide everything this child needs from them for the rest of its life, and they have the means to do so. Well, maybe not everything, since they're potentially harming her by posting her face everywhere for the world to see all the time. Everyone knows their city of residence, they post on Instagram when they go on errands, and there's really no privacy to be had for that baby at all. But hey, she definitely won't ever live in poverty. And it is important to note that supposedly the birth parents did choose Bella and Dallin to be the adoptive parents after she saw their profile through the adoption agency. So the birth mother determined that they would be the best family to raise the baby that she carried for nine months. But one really important thing to remember is that adoption exists in order to provide a child with a stable family unit, not for rich people to go and buy babies. Many feel as though Bella and Dallin treated this journey as a materialistic one, rather than just wanting to give a child a home. Two things can be true at once. I think it's okay for us to have watched Bella and Dallin struggle to build a family for five years and to be happy for them when they finally get to start building a family together. At the same time, it's also okay to be unhappy with how they're going about their parenting journey for the sake of their daughter's well-being. Maybe I'm naive, but I think the baby has a long, happy life ahead of her with Bella and Dallin as her parents. They may need therapy to work through the traumas that come from being adopted, even if your adoptive family is perfect and wonderful and amazing and well-meaning, but ultimately, I think the baby will be okay with them in the long run. And let's be honest, these people are gonna adopt more kids in the future, maybe even the near future. No matter what your thoughts are on Della Vlogs, I hope that they can find a way to shift their content away from their children instead of adopting a new baby every time the honeymoon phase wears off from the last. And for goodness sake, shut down the MLM business model, dude. Stop scamming children. And that's all I have for you guys today, so I need to thank a few people before before we end this video, first of all, thank you Factor for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget, go to factor75.com or click the link below. Use the code SavannahMarie50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and 20% off of your next month's boxes. It's a sweet deal, dude. Highly recommend it. And now I need to thank my patrons and my members, guys. The list of names I'm about to read off are my financial supporters. They get access to things like our private Discord server. We have a postcard club, which this month I'm actually drawing everyone one's postcards by hand. So it's like a very custom postcard. I probably won't do that next month though. So if you're going to join and be like, I want a hand-drawn postcard, like you're not going to get it because I'm already like sending them out. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to do it more in the future. So I don't know, join the postcard club. It's fun. And sometimes there's even more than that. So if any of that sounds good to you, you can go to patreon.com slash Savannah Marie, or you can click the join button beneath this video to join my YouTube memberships. Just whatever works for you works for me. So with that, the biggest thank you in the whole wide world world goes to Hula Chowdown, Jacqueline Nutton, Kessie Drew, KJ Barnes, Leanne, Caroline Reed, Daniel Urena, Maddie Darley, 
Ray, Stephanie Mayfield, Ferd, Turgeson, Esquire, AJC, Love to Be Evil, Just Mark, Amber Price, Baby Pink Pearl, Alice Wagner, LaSalle Story, Fallon Harris, Hannah, Jessica Billhart, Emion, and Auntie Lou. And to the rest of my financial supporters, thank you so much for being here and being you. Even if you're not a financial supporter, thank you for making it to the end of this video because YouTube loves watch time. So you just being here really, really helps my channel grow. So I appreciate it so much. With that, guys, I will see you in the next one. Bye.